Our next guest has made a serious career out of making people laugh. And he's known for his brash sense of humor, his distinct voice, and his ability to ruffle a few feathers. And here to discuss his remarkable career and his upcoming roast, the incomparable Gilbert, Gilbert Gottfried. Hi. Yeah, there we go. Yes, Gilbert. That's, I think you're having a stroke. I am. Oh, I'm so excited yes. that you're here. I don't yes. know what to do. Yes. I'm like, good, 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 Gilbert. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. In the house. Yeah, yeah, that's happened to a few people. Right. A few people have died introducing me. Oh my yeah, goodness. yeah, they they try to pronounce my name and and then their heart just stops. And you stepped over them and continued yeah, to show. Yeah, they just have a seizure uh, while introducing me. They say my name and then all of a sudden the room starts spinning and they collapse. That's perfect. I feel oh like gosh. I set that up, but I didn't. Yeah. 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 That was totally improv. Too. Yes. Okay, before we start the interview, okay. and before I have another heart attack, yeah. we've got to talk about your voice. Is that real? Is that how you really sound? Uh, no, no, off camera I sound just like Lenisa. Uh, uh, yes. uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Did God. you have a voice as a child? Were yeah. you in kindergarten yeah, talking? Yeah. And they speak me when I was born. I went, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So did you always love your voice? When did you decide it was a gift? And not uh, curse? Oh, well, it depends who's listening to it, whether it's a gift or not. Well, to you, what is it? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. It's hopefully another paycheck. Um, yeah. It's definitely got, it's definitely got yeah, you that. It's been a comic gift, definitely, mm -hmm. for you. It's one of the most most distinct voices in the industry. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a good yes, thing. Yes, me and Bing Crosby. You and, yes. you yeah. and Bing Crosby. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and you've been doing it for years. You're one of the, the hardest working and longest com stand up comedians that I know of. I mean, is it true that you've been doing this since the age of 15? Uh, yeah. First time I got up on stage, I was 15. And it was nice that there was a club that served alcohol uh, ready to allow a 15-year-old on stage. What type of jokes were you telling at 15? What not, are you talking not about? Not anything uh, really all that exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, but I haven't changed my act much since then. Really? In yeah, yeah. Years? I'm very lazy that way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still doing jokes about uh, Bonanza. But yeah. Wow. Bonanza, <laughs> yeah. really. I I've read about that in history books. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so what kind of reception did you receive at 15 when you got up on stage? And yeah. were you nervous your I first time? I I don't see. I don't. I think I was both too stupid to be nervous. Okay. Yeah, I think you get nervous later on. Years mm -hmm. later, you go, oh, this. You know, just like years later, when you think, uh, oh, I'm in this business. I, I don't belong here. And, but when you're young, you. Too stupid That's to know true. any better. Sometimes you're just so naive, you just go for it. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's just like um, I right now I still kind of feel like any minutes, my last minute, and that they're gonna. I feel like I snuck into a party, <laughs> and they're gonna come up to me and go, oh, "I'm sorry, you're not on the list." Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, you've been at the party for well over three mm -hmm. decades, my friend. So no one's kicking you out anytime yes. soon. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you worry about that. Yes. What drew you to comedy in the first? place I was too stupid to do anything else <laughs> I think I I liked what I liked about show business mm -hmm. was um, if you work in a grocery store and you can't tie your shoelaces then you're an idiot mm -hmm. but if you're Johnny Depp and you can't tie your shoelaces <laughs> and it's like ooh, he's this eccentric artist oh yeah yeah that's true that makes you quirky yes, yes. Yeah, that's just part of his genius. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't know how to lick an envelope. My God. But he He's knows how to tell a great joke. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so what's been the key to your longevity in the industry? Yeah. Uh, just that I haven't dropped dead. That's basically okay. it. Yeah. You've killed others, but you haven't died yourself. So that's a good thing. <laughs> Over the years, you've appeared on SNL, MTV, The Cosby Show, David Letterman, countless times. I mean, you're in Aladdin. Your voice is in Aladdin. I mean, seriously, explain the longevity. How yes. have you, how, yeah, you, you, on a serious note, seriously, yeah. how have you managed to maintain <laughs> when so many of your peers have disappeared over the years? I don't know. That's the scary part about, see, that's scary, too that you don't realize uh, or in your early days in the business mm -hmm. is whenever I think, whenever I'm looking at my career and going, oh, my career is nowhere, which is every second of my life, <laughs> I, I always think of all the comedians 
who were at those clubs every single night right. for years, and now I don't even remember their names or what they look like. That's true. It's so sad, actually. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, I'm going to go hang myself. It's like I'm sad. Yeah. Okay, well, if you don't know He's how like, as you long as I'm here, I don't care. <laughs> if you don't know how you were able to be successful so long, then what advice do you give to those people who are breaking into the game and want to speak to a legend like yourself? Terrible. I, I'm terrible as far as advice goes. You're like, I don't know. Be stupid. Yeah, yeah. Be stupid. Uh, yeah, you know, because all I could think of, it's kind of like when people want to hear advice on how to lose weight. They want advice that means, you know, just sit around and eat cake, and that's the way you can lose. And it's just, I don't know, keep doing it. Yeah. And it's such dumb advice. Hard work. Now, over the years, you've gotten into some trouble. You're, Me? Yes. Yeah. Well, you. thank God I've kept it out of the papers. <laughs> yeah, but no. <laughs> God, it's never cost me any work. Right. Oh, yeah. Since you brought it up. <laughs> she mentioned it, not us. You're the voice of the Affleck duck, and you landed in some hot water, and you lost that gig. That was a pretty lucrative deal for you. Mm. Did that hurt? Are, are, are you a comedian? You just brush it off. Uh, I'm. Well, it, it always hurts when you got one last job. Right. But as far as, as a comedian, it's mm -hmm. like I feel like it's gotten so nutty. Nowadays, especially with the internet. I was going to ask you about social media. I oh, it, it's it's awful. I mean, the guy who <laughs> masturbated with an apple pie had to apologize <laughs> right. for making a joke about the Malaysian yeah. plane. Yes, and I kind of feel like I I've always said like the internet makes me sentimental for old-time lynch mobs who used to actually get their hands dirty. Right. And now, uh, lynch mobs, it's like the new, uh, you sit on your couch right. with your computer and form a lynch mob, and now it's like, it's, it, it's, I, I feel like the internet is the new way to ring someone's doorbell and run away. It's just, so it's do you think point. it's easier or more difficult as a comedian to be able to, you know, do your talent and do, especially your stage performance, because people say people would upload it before you even get off the stage. Oh, so you can't uh, test that, material. That, yeah, yeah. And it's like there are people getting in trouble now, uh, not just in clubs nowadays, because mm -hmm. everyone records it, but walking down the street. That's true. You know, they'll yell something at someone, and then they got to apologize. And don't you think that we've just, we're in an era where everyone's a little too politically correct? I mean, it's, isn't comedy it, about pushing the envelope and about just being able to say things that your average person isn't willing to say? Uh, George Carlin said it's the duty of the comedian to find where the line is drawn and step over yes, it. Yes, I agree. And it's always, uh, it, it seems like this idea that, like, you have to be totally careful about things. I think the audience wants to feel like it, they want to feel like they've been on a roller coaster mm -hmm. ride and where they could die on the roller coaster. They could get thrown off, and then when it's over, they take a deep breath, and it's okay. Yeah, mm. I but, like that analogy. That's a good one. See, I, every now and I, I have to talk for an hour, yeah. and then I come out with something vaguely intelligent. <laughs> no, that was really good. You <laughs> just took me on a roller coaster yeah. ride, yeah. and I almost died for the second time during this interview. So thank you. Speaking of roller coaster rides, you're going to be going on a roller coaster ride soon on a roast for Last Comic Standing. Why would you willingly agree to go on a roast? Uh, yeah, it, just it, roast it's uh, just someone they said they'd pay me. Yeah. Uh, yeah, That's a good like they, they called me me up. They called me the night before and said, could you fly out tomorrow? And I guess Dennis Haskins from Saved by the Bell canceled at the last minute. Uh, thank you for the one person who knows him as Mr. Belding. <laughs> Mr. Belding from Saved, Saved by the, the Bell? No, I just made that up. Oh I, uh, I just... <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. But yeah, I am getting roasted. I guess that's Thursday. Mm -hmm. 
I'm getting roasted. And why, you, why would someone willingly sit there for that type of verbal abuse? They just seem so mean and under the belt and well, just harsh. I'm, I know, more than a paycheck. I'm used to giving myself abuse, but that's Fair a enough. whole other story. Oh, I'm sorry. I, uh, I apologize for that. I'll be sending out a tweet with my apology. Uh, I apologize for all the self-abuse I've done over the years. Oh, and I also have a podcast now. Yes. Oh, so what can we, we expect know. on your podcast? You'll see, that's uh, also you. <laughs> yeah, podcast is started to. <laughs> everyone is falling apart. Uh, it's I, probably I, amazing, it's, colossal podcast. Yes, right. and it's you could subscribe to it on the Sideshow uh, on Network TV or Sideshow TV. Not okay. that, I don't know, and then <laughs> on iTunes and listen to it on GilbertGottfried.com. All right. I made up that title. Okay. Uh, well, we're going to Google it. We'll find it. We'll yeah, find and it. I, I'm, I'm trying to get what's left of old Hollywood mm -hmm. on it. Like, I interviewed Larry Storch from F Troop. Wow. And thank you. And uh, uh, Dick Cavett. Yes. Uh, I interviewed the guy that played Carlo in The Godfather. He's the one who's always beating up Talia Shire. Oh, and, really? Wow. And he yes. claims, he claims that he's killed three people. In real life? Yeah. He no. says it's three people that I could admit to. So I guess you're allowed three people to right. kill. <laughs> I didn't know this. That's yeah. the limit, though. I, no I'm more. I'm no lawyer. Right. But, uh, oh, only three? Oh, that's fine. A uh, five dollar fine for that. And he claims to have had sex with Marilyn Monroe. And Marilyn Monroe hasn't stepped forward to dispute. <laughs> It. So, no, uh, she has not. Must be true. And, and I called Boris Karloff's daughter. Really? Is still alive. Okay. Well. And I called her up and I said, It's Gilbert Gottfried. Would you like to be on the podcast? And she said, Well, yes, I'd love to be on the podcast. <laughs> and, <laughs> <laughs> That's wrong. That's wrong. <laughs> Pushing that envelope. Always. And we'll continue to watch you push the envelope. And we'll check out your roast on Thursday and your podcast as well. Yes. And I, I, I'm on my website, gilbertgottfried.com, you could get an autographed copy of my book. Rubber balls and liquor. All right. <laughs> and on that okay. note, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of pushing oh, that envelope, a pleasure. never disappoint. You're such never a disappoint. Bad boy. <laughs> Thank you so much, break. Gilbert, for joining us. Baby. We'll be right oh, back with more. Arise Entertainment <laughs> Can I get 360. A